one property which sets the exponential distribution apart from every other continuous distribution is the memoryless property. You may recall from the last chapter that the geometric distribution was the only discrete distribution that had the memoryless property. Likewise, the exponential is the only continuous distribution that has the memoryless property. Here is the result for the random variable x having an exponential distribution with parameter lambda and for any two positive real numbers x and y the probability that the random variable x is greater than or equal to x plus y given the random variable x is greater than or equal to x is the probability that the random variable x is greater than or equal to y. The proof will start from the left hand side and move eventually to the right hand side. So if you look at this left hand side and you think of this first event as A and the second event as B, we simply have the probability of A given B. And you may recall from chapter 2 that the probability of A given B is the probability of A intersect B divided by the probability of B. And of course intersect means the same as and so this comma here should be referred to as and. So that first step is correct by the definition of conditional probability. Now the next step is true by what I would call equivalent events which is to say that if the random variable x is greater than or equal to x plus y then it's always the case that x is greater than or equal to x because x and y are both positive real numbers. So this second event here is superfluous so it can be simply removed and this longer event here is equivalent to this shorter event. Well in both the numerator and the denominator both of these are the probability that the x is greater than or equal to something, which is to say you could go back and use this, the cumulative distribution function and say this is 1 minus the probability x is less than something. And if you simply use the exponential distribution, cumulative distribution function, which was derived on the previous slide, you wind up with this right here. And if you take the numerator and write it as e to the minus lambda x times e to the minus lambda y, the e to the minus x's cancel, so that's a little bit of algebra here, and you get e to the minus lambda y. Finally, if you refer one more time to the exponential cumulative distribution function, this time in the other direction, you wind up with the probability that the random variable x is greater than or equal to y, and that's exactly what we want to complete the proof. Here is the geometry associated with the memoryless property. Let's say we have a brand new light bulb and this probability density function right here which starts at height lambda and simply decreases according to lambda e to the minus lambda x. That's what the lifetime of the light bulb looks like. Then let's choose a particular time x, which is right here, and say that the light bulb has survived to time x. Well, its remaining lifetime looks like this, but of course the remaining part of the probability density function does not integrate to 1. So if we rescale it so that it does integrate to 1, it will look like this. And it turns out this curve, if you were to simply shift it, back x units in this direction would fall right on top of that one. That is to say if this is the distribution of a new light bulb and this is the distribution of a used light bulb then a new light bulb and a used light bulb and keep in mind the used light bulb has not failed of course are equivalent in terms of their remaining time to failure. If you go back to the original result, here is the what is known as the survivor function of a brand new light bulb. 
And here is the survivor function of a light bulb that has survived time x. So the geometry behind the memoryless property is if you take the original distribution and take any value x and rescale it, the used distribution will be identical to the distribution of a new light bulb.